Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your boy Kenny, and this is um, Queen Sugar Season Two, Episodes One and Two. Um, the name of Episode One is After the Winter, and the name of Episode Two is um, uh, To Us um, To Usward. Yeah, To Usward. Uh, I want to go on to say I am so glad this show is back. I love the writing on the show. I love the I love the acting. I love the creative you know, energy that surrounds this show, and it's definitely a show that that is very prominent in today's society, because a lot of the current issues that we're dealing with as far as, you know, police brutality, and after what recently happened with um, Philando Castile, I mean, this is like a, a serious topic that is really taking over, you know, American culture, and this is a show that actually is really giving a, a real light to what the current political situation and economic situation that we're currently dealing with. All right. So, episode one opens up with um, Nova. Nova, right now, um, she's no longer with the cop um, from season one, and she's pretty much sexually fluid. She's just having sex with random white guys, and she's having a whole bunch of one-night stands, and it's just doing her thing right now, and, you know, that's pretty much where Nova is. Um, next, we actually get a scene where um, Charlie and Remy are actually having a meeting with, um, with, some, with some business associates, you know, involving Queen Sugar, and Queen Sugar is going to be the name of the mill that, um, that, um, that, uh, that Charlie's going to be running, and pretty much they need, you know, loans so they can, um, remodel, you know, the mill and get it up to date, but the, the people that she wants to do the deal with, they pretty much says, oh, um, is Davis going to be involved? Because we were under the impression that the both of you, you know, do business, um, you, that you both do business, you know, as a, as a, as a unit, you know, but she let them know that, no, Queen Sugar is my business, you know, Davis has something to do with this. Well, they let her know that if Davis is not involved, we're not going to be a part of it because Davis, Davis brand is very big to our clients, so if Davis is not a part of this, we're not signing on. So, she pretty much had that to deal with. And then we actually see that Charlie and my boy Remy like to drink. But Remy's pretty much at this point where he's just over it, you know, because she's still kind of caught up under, you know, Davis West, and he's pretty much saying that, look, you know, and as long as you got all this going on, I think our interaction should be just strictly professional and nothing more, nothing less. And that's where he kind of left it. But because, you know, Remy is really falling for Charlie, and yet her being still tied to Davis is really starting to get to him. Um, next, we actually also have a scene with um, Ralph Angel, Darla, and Blue. Um, he pretty much takes Blue to pretty much show him, you know, um, he pretty much gave him a quarter of, a, um, of um, some of the land for Blue to have, so therefore Blue will pretty much have land where he can grow and he can prosper and he can develop into a business when he gets older. And he has a big piece of land, and I'm like, see, that is beautiful. That is what should, that, that is what should be happening, where, um, parents are able to pass down, you know, things like land and, you know, businesses and, you know, uh, real economic opportunities for their children to be bosses rather than be employees. So I thought that was very prominent and it was really good that, you know, it actually inspired me. It was really breathtaking to see, you know, this black man really being um, a true father to his son and saying that I want my son to have the best and I'll do and I want to give my son, you know, a quarter of the land that is just for him. So he can, you know, make money off of that land and he can, um, you know, use it to support his family. And of course probably when, you know, Ralph Angel passes, he's definitely gonna leave everything to blue as well. So that's rather really interesting. But the thing is, Ralph still has Ralph Angel still not still hasn't told Charlie and Nova about that last will and testament that Ernest wrote before he passed away, where he left the land to Ralph Angel. So 
Ralph Angel pretty much owns the land. And right now, he hasn't, to this point, he has not said anything to them about it. So he really got the golden ticket. But as of right now, he, I mean, even though he is willing to turn the land, pretty much now it's like a, it's like a joint venture where he can't really do anything unless he has to go through Charlie and Nova, and if they, they all are, are not in agreement, then Ralph Angel can't do what he wants or can't make certain decisions that he wants to make. So he's kind of in a bind, and we kind of see this, you know, with him in this episode as well as the episode that they that on premiere tonight as well. Um, we actually see that um, Micah um, just turned 16. His father got him this this fabulous sports car. You know, he's riding around with his girlfriend, Kiki. So we saw Kiki back, and, you know, him and Kiki are an item. And we actually see them, at, they actually saw them having a birthday dinner with Charlie. And Charlie's just blushing, seeing her son becoming a man. And, you know, the two of them, you know, kind of, you're like flirting back and forth with each other. She's like, she thinks it's so cute. And, you know, but Micah's pretty much saying that, yeah, it's, it's a, and pretty much he was saying that, you know, the car, really, it is what it is, you know, but he's like, yeah, it's a car, but I don't really care because it's just only a gift for my father, and my father just having a way of controlling me or trying to have, like, some input in my life, but personally, I could care less about the car, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I think he just bought this car as a way of proving something to himself. So, uh, Micah is like, yeah, he's happy he got the sports car, but then he feels that this is just only a bargaining tool that his that Davis is using just to try to get in, just trying to get on Mike on Micah's good side because he knows that Micah is pissed at him, especially for the fact that because of his actions, his family is now being broken up, and you know, currently Charlie and um, Davis are actually filing for divorce, and they're going through um, mediations. Uh, next, we actually also see that Anvai is still thinking about Hollywood. You know, Hollywood, we remember from um, the season finale, Hollywood was actually, um, as he took a job on the rigs um, for six months. So six months he's going to be away. And we really see that she still has a longing for Hollywood. And... You know, she tries calling Hollywood, but it goes straight to voicemail. Then she gets a call from Nova saying, like, girl, we're about to go out. We're going out, you know, with Charlie, you know, to celebrate her son's birthday. And she's like, girl, you taking out Charlie to celebrate her son's birthday? Girl, please, you're just trying to find an excuse to go out. But, yeah, I'm down. So they pretty much go out. Aunt Vi gets fucked up, y'all. <laughs> she is so up to the flow up. And both her, um, Charlie and Nova are just having a good time and everything. They out dancing, having a good time. And the next thing you know, Charlie starts, stops dead in her tracks. And she sees that Davis is there with another woman. Now, Charlie's pissed off for the fact that, one, they're still going through their divorce. Their divorce is not final. And, on, and another thing, Davis West is a public figure. He's a basketball star. So, the fact that you're out here with this woman out in public, where the media can get to it, and we're trying to keep our situation hush-hush, but you out here, you know, with another woman and everything, and, you know, you're just pretty much making a fool out of me. So, Charlie and him go at it, and she's saying, like, first of all, instead of you being here with this thing, you need to be with your son. And he lets her know, like, look, your son, our, our son canceled on me to be with his girlfriend. So that's what's going on there. And if you looked around, do you see any cameras or cell phones anywhere? So it's not an issue. And then the next thing you know, I'm by gets in it and she's like, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. This woman did everything for you and this is how you would this is how you would pay her and they go into it and then it's gonna get to the and it gets to the point where um old girl's gonna get up like she's about to do something, you know, the girl that's with Wes and fucking Nova's like, Sit your ass down And <laughs> she sat right back down too. I'm like, Girl, you don't want it because she was ready to, you know, try to go at by and Nova's like, Uh uh boo boo. No. <laughs> this is not your lane. Have a seat. So we we saw that happen, and 
and yeah, that that was that was definitely crazy. Then we also get a scene with um, Ralph Angel, um, and he's talking to I think um, Proctor, and you know, remember Proctor? He was the one that worked very close with Ernest, and you know, he definitely knows you know the the farm, and he definitely knows the land, and he's pretty much kind of like you know a farm manager, um, and pretty much um, the the tractor. Um, which was actually Ernest's old tractor, um, it's not working, and he's trying to find the cheapest way, so pretty much Ralph Angel thinks that um, we're going to find the cheapest way to actually fix the problem, and we see that later on, he comes, he goes head to head with Charlie about it, because Charlie's like, instead of you trying to find a cheap way to just to fix an old tractor that's obviously on his last legs, you should just invest in getting a new tractor where you know, we actually save more money down the line versus we're going to be constantly spending money to repair this tractor that doesn't work. So we actually see that even from from the season finale, even until now, Charlie and Ralph Angel are just, are just, you know, butting heads. You know, because Ralph Angel wants more control, he wants more respect, and he wants more of a say-so in, um, in the actual, you know, family business. And he's really seeing that Charlie is pretty much the one that's overseeing everything, and Ralph Angel right now is resistant to that because he wants to actually, you know, take leadership as a man and be able to, you know, call some shots. But he feels that every time he tries to do something, Charlie always shoots him down. And it's because Charlie's Ivy League, and she definitely knows business and finance, and she sees things in a different way than Ralph, but, the, but Ralph's vision is just as viable, but... Charlie is all about, she feels that her vision is better than his. And, you know, Aunt Vi had to kind of get in the middle of it and was like, look, you need to start affirming Ralph Angel. He is doing this part. He is trying to be a man. He is, you know, you know whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me rephrase that. He is being a man. He's taking charge. You know, he's rebuilding his family. And he's trying to take leadership, you know, in the farm. And we should support him. And and she's saying that you need to affirm him and not always tear him down every time he makes a decision. Then we also get a scene with um, Darla. She's still going through her recovery, you know, because we remember that, you know, Darla is a heroin addict. And, you know, she's pretty much, you know, clean now. And, um, you know, she's been clean for a number of months. And she wants to make sure she stays on the right path. So she's now to the point where she wants to kind of take things back because she's like she's so happy that she's back that she that she's back with Ralph Angel and she has Blue back in her life and she doesn't want to screw it up and she wants to make sure that she doesn't jump you know in too deep and she makes bad decisions again that affects both Ralph Angel and Blue in a negative way so she and she and also herself so she's trying to take things back but Ralph Angel is so eager it's like you don't need to be going to those therapy sessions you know everything good is like uh, no Ralph Angel she needs those therapy sessions because that's going to keep her on the straight and narrow. Due to the fact she's talking to other addicts, that, that gives her an, affirma um, an affirmation that she's not alone, that she's not the only one battling this issue. And for her to kind of move forward, she needs, she needs that support system to keep her going. And we see that's what Darla's trying to do, and she's, you know, she's decided to not, you know, stay the night at the house, and she wants to kind of, like, take, um, she kind of wants to take a step back. She's like, I'm not breaking up with you. Um, I, I just, I just want to take things slower, and I just want to, you know, make sure that I'm, that I'm grounded like you are, that we're both grounded, and therefore our relationship can actually last versus falling apart like you did the last time and me falling victim to drug abuse. So, we got it. So that was pretty much a good scene right there. Uh, pretty much, um, you know, I'm guys making dinner and everything, and, you know, Micah, I, and I think it's for, like, Micah's birthday, they, they're having, like, a big dinner, and Micah's supposed to be on his way there, but Micah never shows up. Um, she, um, we then later on find out that um, Dave, she, um, Charlie ends up getting a call from Davis, you know, after they say the prayer, and Davis is like, yo, have you heard from Micah? You know, Micah just left me, and it's been hours, and I haven't heard from him. You know, I've been calling him, but I haven't been able to get, you know, he hasn't been answering my phone calls. Do you know where he is? 
and you know Charlie's like no like you know he should have been here by now I don't know what the hell's going on little do they know Ralph Angel gets stopped for DWB <laughs> driving while black he gets stopped by the cop the cop in a way you know pretty much tells him to turn off his engine then tells him to roll down his window but then he's letting them know that I had to turn on the car in order to roll down the window. He's like, roll down your window, I said. You know, and I'm like, oh, hell. Here it is. He's pretty much going to use his badge as a means to bully, you know, this young black man in a fancy car. And he had left his license at home. Big mistake. Anytime you fucking drive, have that damn license on you. Because they can hold that shit against you, and then you'll be open to a whole bunch of other shit. You know, and next thing you know, um, you know, he reaches to get his registration, I think, and then all of a sudden the damn cop pulls a damn gun on him. I'm like, this motherfucker don't even have a fucking gun. Why the hell are you drawing your fucking weapon for? You piece of shit. That that really made me mad. So they have arrested, so pretty much they arrested Micah, you know, left his car on the road, um... Pretty much, um, Nova and Charlie find it, and then they pretty much kind of put it all together that, yeah, he's probably, you know, been taken to jail, and Micah is, is like, literally traumatized. He asks to make a, make a phone call. The cop is like, well, you're going to have to get in line because it's for all the people in line before you. So he literally starts crying, and he's, like, literally shaken up by this. Because he's never had to deal with anything like this. Remember, this was pretty much the prince of 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 Davis and Charlie of um, Charlie West. I mean, this boy had a rich upbringing. He went to private school. He never had to deal with the type of reality that that a good majority of black people face in America. He got to live the Ivy League life. He got to live, you know, the life of um. You know the life of um, the life of plenty. You know um, the la the life of luxury. You know because his father is rich and his mother is a rich businesswoman. So he's now being introduced to another side of life that he's never been exposed to, and it's very traumatic. And it's so sad that it happened at the expense of him being you know being you know locked up for being a black man driving in a fancy car. And it was pretty much. Um, kind of reminiscent of Philando Castillo of how he kind of pulled the weapon on him while he was in the car. Like, why the fuck are you drawing your weapon and he's inside the car and there's obviously no weapon around? So, Mike is pretty much shaken up. So, what happens is that Nova and Charlie go to the police station. They demand for, for um, for, you know, they, they demand to ask, they, they pretty much demand information about, um, about Mike and, and they see if he's in the system. They see that he, they pretty much tell him that he's not in the system, and pretty much Charlie and Nova are like really pissed because it's like these cops really don't give a shit, and they're just being very passive, but then all of a sudden, um, we see that Davis comes in, and immediately they are stargazing at Davis because Davis is now playing for Louisiana and it's like, oh yeah, you're going to win us that fifth champion ring. I hope you get it. You know, can I get a selfie? And he said, can you check the system? My son's name is Michael West. And he's like, well, he's not in the system. I'm like, well, can you check the holding cell because he might be there? And they went to go check the holding cell. And, you know, both Nova and Charlie are disgusted by this because it's kind of like, he, he's kissing their asses and stroking nice, but it got Micah out of jail. And we actually see that Michael, that Micah had actually urinated on himself. He was that scared. But Nova comforted him and said, like, look, you have nothing to be ashamed of. Whatever they did to you, it's not true. You know, I need you to get past this, and we will get past this. And, you know, whatever the hell they said to you in there, it's not true. Don't listen to them. Don't don't let that don't let that cloud your mind or your judgment. Then while she's having a conversation with Micah, damn Davis and Charlie are fucking fighting again. She's like, oh, so this is what you do? You know, your son 
you you bought your son that damn car. Your son gets gets um gets arrested for driving while black, and then you go in there and you play step and fetch it with the fucking police officers. And he said that look, the, you know what your fucking problem is, Charlie. You think you're the only one with the answers, and you don't think no one else got the answers. You think you're supposed to have the answers to everything. Yeah, it was my step and fetch it. I do what I had to do, and if it weren't for me, this ass wouldn't be out. And then we pretty much see that Micah, you know, walks up on them, and he talks to Micah and says, "That look, son, we're gonna get, we're gonna get through this. I'm gonna be by your side, and I'm gonna help you through this." And he pretty much embraces his father. So we actually see that, yeah, things really got, things really got real. And pretty much, um, we actually see that's pretty much where the episode ended, where you know he's pretty much now come into grips with, um, you know, with this harsh reality that was literally thrown at him out of nowhere. I mean, before that, Michael was this happy kid. He was just turned 16, just got him a new car, and then all of a sudden he's being, you know, thrown in jail, and he's disrespected in the worst way, and now he doesn't know how to feel. And it was really sad to actually see this happen to him. Okay, episode two is um, so that was my that's my review for episode one. Now I'm going to episode two, um, which is called um, "To Usward." Um, we actually see that um, you know Ralph Angel and Darla are still taking it slow. Um, he goes to her job and actually offers to take her out on a date, you know, and that they're gonna like you know kind of rekindle their romance and do things the right way. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, next, we actually see that um, Bob, that um, Nova actually goes to um, a barber shop to um, check on because um, she's she's pretty much um, trying to create this community fundraiser, you know, to help you know you know poor black men and women who make it um, railroaded in the system they, that that they'll actually have like a community bank that can actually help fund them as far as their defense and. Um, it's actually a great idea, you know, that we can actually help our own because, you know, a lot of lot of us are sitting in jail for sometimes over years, sometimes years, you know, until you get a case and, you know, due to the fact you can't afford a lawyer, one has to be appointed to you and sometimes you're going to be waiting for a long time before you get appointed a lawyer. So that whole time you're just riding in jail. And... You know, her main mission is to kind of like, you know, change this whole dynamic of, um, of, uh, you know, police brutality and all that. So she's, you know, there talking to all of the men in the barbershop. And we actually see that she does have like this really close thing with the head barber there. And we come to find out that him and Charlie, I mean, him and Nova kind of had a thing back in the day. But Nova, but Nova and him are still good friends. But yeah, he still got a thing for Nova though. So I thought that was pretty cool. And pretty much um, when um, Nova finally, so afterwards, Nova goes to Anvai's um, house. Anvai's um, cooking and all of that. I think she's making food, you know, um, for like the community fundraiser or whatever, you know, to help her out. And all of a sudden, um, we actually, she actually, they, they both find out, well, pretty much, Nova finds out from um, Vi that uh, Charlie is having her last mediation for a divorce, and then after that, I think that the divorce will become final. So, pretty much, you know, you know, Charlie is pretty much pretty shaken as to what's gonna, you know, they pretty much got everything almost ironed out as far as their assets and everything, and pretty much they're about to just close the book on everything, and then they're gonna move forward. And we can actually still see that that um, Micah is still traumatized by what happened to him on the last episode when he was arrested for driving while black. He's still just shaking up. He's not eating. He's not talking as much. He's kind of cut off, and he's not really responding to anything. It's like he's he's been culture shocked, and and in the worst way, which was which was actually hard to watch. You know, as far as Micah's Micah's character, I mean, but. I have to say, you know, um, 
I've got the I've got the the um the the young man's name who plays the role of Michael, but he did a wonderful job playing this role. I mean, you know, I was literally just just sunk into to Micah's um journey throughout this um episode because he's now trying to find himself and now trying to understand the world that he now lives in. So next we actually see that um that a Ralph Angel um is trying to buy some um some some soybean, you know, to to pretty much plant, you know, um uh, to pretty much um you know plant on the um on the land. But um the soybean um seeding fee is actually very expensive and you know, he doesn't have the means to um he really much right now doesn't have the means to do it. And so what he does is that he goes to the banker, you know, because um, he's on the account, but he can't withdraw any money unless it's signed off by Charlie. So throughout this episode, we actually see, we're seeing that he's trying to become a man and actually take ownership and take leadership, you know, in his role. But he feels, but pretty much sadly, he has to go through Charlie for everything. Because him and Remy have a conversation, and Remy's telling him about this loan program, and they are set up to help, you know, young men like yourself who have, you know, started a little something, but they need a, they need an extra hand. So he gets that set up, and then later on we find out that they need a letter of recommendation from his employer, which is Charlie. And then we see that he's actually looking at the actual letter that um, Ernest wrote, the last will and testament, because really he owns everything. He owns the farm. Charlie owns the mill, though. So really at the end of the day, it, it's crazy because both of them are powerheads, but they need each other in order to make this whole thing work. You know, because he can be, yeah, he may have the land, but, you know, you're going to be getting a shitty deal working with all these other mills because the other mills are, are run by, you know, the other, you know, the other um, racist families that are ripping off all of the black farmers. So, we're pretty much saying that, you know, Ralph Angel is just at this point where he's just tired of feeling like he has to go through Charlie for everything, that he feels that I can make decisions, I'm of sound mind and body, and when he affirms him, when he says that, look, I believe in you, I believe in that farm, and even though right now I'm kind of having some issues with your sister, I still have my loyalty to your father, and I have my loyalty to that farm, and I will do everything I can to help you. So he does give him some advice to look, you know, you don't actually have to get Charlie's permission, you can do this yourself. And I think that's what he needed. Definitely. He definitely, I mean, pretty much he, you know, he affirmed him. So, yes, let me uh, go here and then, okay. So, we pretty much uh, see that Ralph Angel and um, Darlo on the date. And, um, we see that, um, Ralph Angel and Dollar on the date with, and uh, they, they got, um, they have Blue with them, and we see that they're pretty much interacting with each other, and, um, and they, there was a scene that happened with the waiter that was so out of line, because, you know, Micah has that little, has that doll, you know, the, the um, the, the baby doll that, it's kind of like his, you know, personal friend. Like, he's like his old imaginary friend or whatever. So he brought the doll, and he's playing on the table. And, you know, the waiter starts talking to Blue, and he's like, hi, how you doing? He's like, he's like yeah, and like, you're like, and this is my doll. He's like, oh, you got a doll? Oh, well, I know some Transformers that are even better than that. And immediately, Ralph Angel looked like, motherfucker. Like, no. And he says that, look. This is what we want. We want two Sundays. One for my son and one for his doll. Can you make that happen? So Ralph Angel was over it. And um, there was even at one point where Dollar kind of had to like check um, Blue because Blue was making all this noise. And she was like, calm down. And she's like, like Blue, sit down. And she's like, come on, it's okay, it's okay. He's like, no, I don't think he should act like that when we're out. 
you know, he needs to behave himself. So we're kind of seeing she's kind of like becoming, you know, kind of laying down the law as being the mother. So she's trying to get her foundation to be like, no, you know, I, I need to kind of prove myself as a woman and as and as a mother. So we kind of saw that going on. And uh, pretty much um, from that alone, we actually see that they, she's pretty much further and further is just letting them know that, look, I'm with you, Ralph, but I want to take it slow and I want, I want to kind of like make sure that we're both on the same page. So it was good seeing them out to dinner. And like, you know, Ralph Angel wasn't going to tip the damn way. He said, after the way you did the blow, I ain't giving him shit. He's lucky he's getting his salary. And she's like, look, you know, you don't have to try to play like you're the man for me. I know you're a man. You don't have to do all that to impress me. I'm with you. We're, we're in this together. Because, you know, she actually, I think, left the tip for the guy. Because he wasn't going to tip him. But um, then we get the scene that was definitely very eye-catching. Um, Charlie is going for her last mediation for her divorce. They sit down with their lawyers and everything. And then all of a sudden, Davis decides to pull a motherfucking stunt. I want to speak along with Charlie. And the lady, and like, the lawyer's like, um, we've been dealing with these, with, you know, with this case all open. Now you want to speak to her alone? He's like, yeah, I just want to speak to my, 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 um, my future ex-wife. I want to speak to her alone. So, he pretty much, you know, they pretty much dismissed everybody. And then, you know, Charlie's kind of wondering, what the hell? You know, we did everything that we were supposed to do. Everything as far as, like, the property and our ownership and all of that. You know, everything being split, you know, evenly. And she's like, what the hell is this? What, what the hell do you want? What more do you want? You know, and Davis is, like, really kind of like, you really think I care about this shit? Like, girl, you can have it. I don't care. That's not what this is about. You think I'm I'm having a meeting because this like then what the hell you want? He, and she's like, it's about Micah. I think we need to visit that whole custody thing because I want joint custody. And Charlie immediately was like, you know, what the hell do you mean joint custody? You know, you can still be his father without that. But he's like, you know, regardless of the fact you need to be his father regardless whether you have joint custody or not. And He's like, well, at the end of the day, he is my son. I need to make that a priority. I need to be in his life. I need to help raise him, and I need to be responsible. And he always said, I already talked to Micah. Micah wants us to have joint custody of him. He wants the both of us in his life. And then that just totally threw Charlie off. And so now the, the remediation still continues. Because Charlie ain't ready to, to, to give him joint custody. And then she calls Micah. Micah didn't even go to school. Micah just skipped school and just walking around in a, in a bout. Because he's traumatized still. And she literally breaks down because she realizes that, yeah, he's going to need his father. And, yeah, after what happened to him things are not going to be the same. You know, now he's very distant, he's very dismissive, and he's very to himself. And we, we, literally see, we literally see Micah throughout the whole episode go through the whole city looking at urban life. And then we get, like, the big ending where um, Nova is actually, um, you know, at the um, community fundraiser. She's talking about police brutality, and she's saying that, these black bodies are honest and good and that we will not be afraid. We are no longer going to be treated like animals. And just because we're poor and because we're black, we're human beings. We have a right to be here just like everybody else. And we should be respected as such. And Micah actually shows up and actually sees her there. And also another thing that happened... Um, Roberta, y'all remember Roberta, you know, that works at the diner. She's a big-ass hoe because we definitely seen that she was flirting with Hollywood, but then she's also had sex with Ralph Angel once, too. So, but Roberta's a mess. She always putting out her titties trying to get them extra tips. I ain't mad at her, though. But Roberta and um, Aunt Vi had a moment because she had said that, look, I heard something about that rig where Hollywood is at. 
and she's like, what do you hear? And it took her a minute to get it out because she was kind of traumatized because she's thinking maybe the the worst happened. But she let it be known that, um, she, she let it be known that, um, you know, there was a, um, a, there was like, um, an electrical problem on the wig, and the wig exploded. So, the question is, did Hollywood survive? So, Vi's calling him and calling him, and she's not getting no answer. So, she pretty much goes to, um, the spot where they're dropping everybody off to see if Hollywood is on that bus. And we literally see her break down emotionally and everything because she's thinking that Hollywood may have died in that explosion. But so happens Hollywood was there and her and Hollywood embraced it. I was so happy for that because I love Hollywood and Fi as a couple. I really do. And I really hope they do work things out. But I know it's not going to be an easy walk in the park. They've still got a lot of things to kind of settle between, between the two of them. And also similar, we also had a scene with um, Charlie and, um, you know, Charlie and um, Remy. And we also had a sort of scene where she actually called her mother. And I think her and her mother have a distant relationship. But she's looking to reach out to her mother because she's kind of like wondering what, she, what should she do. So she goes to Remy and, you know, Remy pretty much is like very emotional because it's the anniversary of his wife's death. His wife died four years ago. And he pretty much explains who his wife was. She was a part of the Army Reserve, and she was stationed in Afghanistan. And her truck ran over um, an IDE, like a detonator, and it exploded. And he's been traumatized ever since. Like, and he said that, look, you're the first woman that I have gotten close to since my wife. And, you know, I don't want to embark on anything until you're both ready, and, we're, and then I'm both ready, and we both can actually build something real. But he did kind of let it know that, yeah, I have feelings for you. And we can tell she has feelings for him, too. Because I like Remy like the drink. You know, he's so smooth with it. That's what I like about Remy. But, um, you know, they pretty much had this conversation. And he pretty much says, I apologize to you because I'm so adamant about fulfilling, you know, that empty void in my life that I'm rushing you and I can't rush this. You know, you and you and Davis have built a life together, and you're probably still kind of sorting out your feelings because you and Davis not only sit, you not not only have you had a a life and business together, but you also have a son together too. So he says I was wrong to kind of force that on you, but she says like you don't have to apologize. You know, you know, um, I should have called first instead of just showing up, and I didn't know what you were going through. But then again, she was glad, she was happy to be there. So that's pretty much what I got, y'all. If I missed anything, let it down in the comments. But I'm so happy that Queen Sugar is back. This is a groundbreaking show. I am so here for it. And I love reviewing this show. So um, so definitely, you know, put it down in the comments if I missed anything with in regarding to either one of these episodes. I love to talk to you all. But, yes, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I will be back with you next week for the next um, episode of Queen Sugar. So until then, everybody, take care.